Welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I do like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Charlotte Schwack. Schwivik? Schwivik. Civic. Civic. <laughs> I get I've got them in the end but before you that got I, it. I got there in the end but before that I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date oh, as it means a lot to me and Charlotte to connect with like-minded people now if you've never met me before then my name is Ray and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past find your purpose Create your future to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps and take charge of your destiny so that you can fulfill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey. A mini guide meditation, oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Charlotte Sivik. Sivik. Sivak. God, I will Sivak. get Sivak. <laughs> about exploring the path to spiritual evolution and awakening the goddess within. Now, as a visionary, Charlotte supports and guides women to hear their soul's voice in alignment with their vision, soul medicine, and in a sacred union. She is an international best selling author, award winning oracle, cosmic channel, sacred songstress, quantum soul healer, spiritual ascension mentor womb priestess and founder creatives of the global goddess alchemy collective and the diamond star mystery school now being featured in numerous international tv and radio shows including discovery usa global tv and ctv the official psychic on y108 fm's mornings for 10 years and featured in el canada Reuters, and yahoo now, born in the waterfall's capital of the world on a new moon solar eclipse, gifting her with X-ray vision and full sensory perception. Charlotte is an epic cosmic adventurer that can be found igniting pillars of light while co-creating sacred spaces on tours, retreats and online. Her wisdom is drawn from the ancient future womb religions and pre practices spanning thousands of years, including Lemurian, Gnostic, Egyptian, Mayan, Avalon and Tantric traditions to the present day New Earth architecture. Guided by, guided by the goddess alchemy frequency and infinity codes of Sirius and Venus, Charlotte tweets initiations of light for her soul clients, journeying along the royal road of their brilliance, elevating ecstatic embodiment gifts and divinity through ceremonial leadership rituals cyclic living sacred programs egyptian retreats one-to-one -one oracle guidance readings <laughs> mentorships and living light transmission offerings now she's fueled by her um, cacao fire ceremonies and soul activations and tacos which with everything she does she needs all this energy now with testimonials such as to anyone that is contemplating scheduling a reading with Charlotte, I would highly recommend a channeled reading from her. Saying that her divine guidance readings are a gift is truly an understatement, as the insight that she so lovingly provides through her channeled readings is otherworldly. The way she was able to tune into me on a soul level and to those around me is so accurate that I don't think there are any words that can truly describe her level of accuracy as a reader. She is so genuine and just overall such a high caliber channel reader. She also brought up a few past lives that really resonated within the Golden Goddess container, Soul Alchemy Mentorship. I'm beyond grateful for the reading. And thank you so much, beautiful soul. Charlotte is a spiritual self activator. She works from her heart, has been doing this for both years in this human life and lifetimes as a spiritual being. It is an honour to know her and experience the divine energies that channel through her, her pure light of transformative blessing. If you are someone who is ready to hear at a soul level, have heard the return of the call of the priestess, welcome her gifts into your life. Your future lifetimes will thank you. So with all that, without further delay, hello Charlotte and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? 
I'm incredible. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. <laughs> and uh, it's, um, it's, uh, you know, it's funny whenever I hear, because it's so rare that I even read any of my, my um, uh, testimonials. testimonials. And really, I should, because they say that's one of those lessons, because when you do what you love, and you have such passion for it, it it's not, it, it just is, it, it's just, you just continue on and you're just it fills you with so much joy and so much light so it's a real uh it's a real honor and um thank you for reading that because i was where'd she get that <laughs> i was oh. like oh yeah she went on my website <laughs> uh, oh, oh 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 yes so, uh, when you agree to be on my show i start to remember doing lots of research <laughs> So, so, so well that's incredible so, <laughs> and you so, know sometimes too because we gotta see how far we've come too and how much work we've done because you're always I mean I'm always doing shadow work and alchemy and goddess alchemy so it's always incredible to also see like how the resonance and the frequency shifts and also too how we also open up to allow ourselves to receive because that's such a huge lesson and uh it's one of the ones I've been working on for years which I'm sure many women can attest to also having that same issue that one and being seen so <laughs> exactly so before we get into this fascinating conversation i want which i know it's going to be i want to remind everyone watching that not only can you share this video but you can also ask questions leave comments and thoughts as both charlotte and i want to be part of this conversation so please don't be shy so charlotte why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can explore the path to spiritual evolution and awaken the goddess within? That's such a, a, a deep question because I am over 50 now. And um, when I started, there was no social media, there was nothing. And it was almost impossible to connect with people unless you ran into them on the street organically or you traveled to a sacred site, which I was at the time. I had started, well, even before I started going to sacred sites, you you would seek out some of the metaphysical sections. I was a, a huge um, uh, believer on uh, going to chapters or uh, I'm not sure in England if it's, is it uh Neiman Marcus, or I, I can't think of the name of the bookstores, but you will go to the bookstores and hang out in the metaphysical section, or at least that's what I did in the beginning. Yeah. And I would only read the books that got thrown at me. And it was always interesting how books would literally fly off the shelf and open right to the page. And in those days, it was also Amazon had just started. It was only selling books at the time. I can't remember how shocked I was when I found out that they sell everything, but <laughs> it began as a book. Um, supplier and that's where i found a lot of my books and i think at that time you had to wait a, a, a week maybe a year for anything to show up at your house now it's there in 20 minutes exactly. whatever comes by drone <laughs> but um that's how i started and i was absolutely beyond any word absolutely obsessed with um egypt and so much so that when I started meditating, my guides, um, Isis had shown up and said, listen, you need to ground yourself in this life before you start to lose yourself into going into other um, of these dimensional realities. And they were words I didn't understand at the time, because, again, of course, how am I supposed to? Uh, I, I just it was more like a light language. It was a resonance. And I couldn't speak as much at that time as well, too, which was really interesting. So it wasn't like I was grunting or anything <laughs> with people, but, but it felt like I couldn't, I didn't have the words to describe what I was trying to say or what I was trying to experience. And honestly, a lot of it all came from reading. I read everything. And then I started meditating. I was introduced to tarot cards when I was 13 years old by my, um, uh, a friend of my mother's daughter and that just boom opened a whole new world to me especially the high priestess card I was again just not just obsessed but just like so drawn to it and trying to understand it and I had nobody to talk to because it, I was born in a very like strict European Eastern European family so this was all taboo and you know you have to have a paycheck every two weeks so anyway going through all of that it was very tough and I really didn't meet anybody for years until I went to um, a psychic expo and our psychic fair. 
which they have, you know, traveling around the cities. And I thought, oh, finally, I feel like somewhere where I kind of belong and maybe I can connect to people. And of course, that's where they had more books and crystals. And I got absolutely absolutely always drawn to crystals i the the collection i have is just unbelievable i mean it's everywhere my my bed is literally turned into an altar of crystals i have a business altar i have crystals in my car my bra i mean they're everywhere and it's so um i love to connect to them and what i was doing at the time was just seeing which one would jump out at me and i would read up on it and that would lead me to whatever my next lesson was and then when pluto went into capricorn in 2007 that's when my world absolutely shifted and i wasn't playing with spirituality anymore or um uh playing with uh trying to be um you know so just like seeing the other sides of spirituality yeah. not like just like the superficial that brings in like the dead or the false light and i started to do alchemy and that's when i got really introduced to goddess alchemy um deeper spiritual spirituality and of course egyptian alchemy and because actually alchemy uh originated from egypt it used to be called kemet which is the ancient word for it and before that civilization it was uh before was atlantis where they had brought forward i mean we this is a whole other <laughs> just see how we fly off here oh, and oh, so wow. through it right so through experiences and i started traveling to sacred sites and in 2009 i held my first retreat and uh we started off on cruise ships visiting sacred sites and by 2011 we had been to hawaii and um egypt of course was always the one i always wanted to go to but anywhere that there seemed to be it just would never work out and every time it looked like it was going to happen three times it didn't happen so i thought well i guess i'm not ready to go yet or it's just not the time and it was um the experiences of being at sacred sites and, and Sedona, I think I went to Sedona seven times and uh, got charged up on a, a vortex. And again, the illumination, the visions. What was interesting to me was when I was in Sedona in 2014, Sekhmet came forward, which is um, a very powerful deity out of the Egyptian culture. And it was just, I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> And it was so interesting to find out the connection of how it's also on a ley line to Egypt and how some of the, the messages, and I found a Sphinx in um, Sedona as well too, and I was just like, I don't understand what's going on here and how it all aligns. But it was always through opening doors and trusting myself. At the time I had been working in the film industry and that again is an industry that is people who trust their intuition and they go through being guided to you know their next project or just trusting that everything is gonna unfold. And so I just kept reading, I kept at it, I kept working at it and people just kept coming to me for sessions and I didn't even understand why because I didn't put myself out there as an intuitive or as a psychic. And finally it got to the point where it was like, I needed to step up, I had to make a choice. SARS had broken out, we were working on a movie that went down and had to be moved to another city. And it was either, you have to pay your bills, so how are you gonna do it? So intuition, psychic readings is where I was like, well, I, I, I gotta make a decision now. And so I started reading in tea rooms and it was unbelievable how people showed up and then the media started showing up. And again, nobody really was doing it. And I was so scared to be seen that I would hide myself in the pictures and everything. Yeah. Like even you can see in my early media interviews, I'm like, <laughs> you know, hiding us. Oh no. And, um, it's just unbelievable how you come forward. I felt very comfortable on radio because of course nobody would see me. So it was, uh, it was incredible. And that opened the gateway to so many other opportunities where I ended up appearing on oh, almost a thousand different shows and uh, that many times and bringing forward all this information and as i grow and as i evolved and as i also expanded more and more people would show up and ask questions or want to know how to evolve and and to start working on their shadow their wounds their 
their deep growth because what I started to realize was people come to me that are ready to jump in. I, I also call myself a portal to enlightenment, not just the Oracle of Destiny, because that's kind of what it is. We're all stargates and we all activate each other by our vibrational frequency. And so we awaken our abilities. And the more you grow, the more you evolve, the more you understand these type of um, triggers. And of course, it just it was just like a natural progression. And I remember being in New York City and right in Manhattan, and we were just about to go on a cruise to, um, I think it was to Mexico and to the uh, Mayan temples for activations with crystal skulls. And um, a book flew off the shelf again that landed in front of me and opened right to a page of exactly what was going on that day in my life, which was wild. <laughs> so of course I bought the book and yep. um, oh. it, it's just, it's a great staple. Sometimes when I get the vibe off of a person, when I'm reading them, I refer them to this specific book because I know it'll help them. But everything only books that would radiate light like you could literally see the light language shooting off of it and i didn't understand what was happening because i have x-ray vision so i can see through the body i can see organs and tissues down to the vertebrae and um down to like the different frequency colors of the organs but nobody could explain to me what it was i thought i was losing my mind so it was very just again doors opening and then i got my astrology reading and found out I was born on the new moon solar eclipse, which is not a very um, typical day that it's not like happens every day, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so when we looked it up, I was blown away by what it had explained because of course it explained a lot of the things that I was having, thinking that I was crazy, but actually wasn't, it was exactly what was happening. So it took a long time, like over the years to, embrace it but in the last um 10 years it has absolutely exponentially blown open and when i really connected with the goddess my higher self that's when everything really shifted so it'd be about 2011 when i really started to step into the cosmic and galactic aspects of um the information and was introduced to all the different um uh, archangels, the 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 vertical, the horizontal um, realms, and just encompassingly, exponentially meeting into um, etheric temples, etheric realms. And most of my teachers were all etheric and through books that I would read. And then that would ignite or open a key or turn something in me that would open something else. And I was like, wow, now this all makes sense. But everything always went backwards. It was never where I would see it and then it would happen. It was already, it had happened. And I'm like, well, now I understand why this happened. And through healing and energy work and activations, I did, I started doing quantum healing and the energy would just pour out of my hands and I would see sacred geometrical shapes and symbols. And again, I could never explain what it was. So I just got obsessed with getting everything I could get my hands on for sacred geometry and what that unlocked, what doors it opened. And and then, of course, everything kept shifting. And when we stepped into the womb, that absolutely transformed me. And at that time, I'd started a mystery school, and um, I called it Sophia Magdalene um, to work through awakening the inner feminine and connecting with our goddess essence so that I started to realize how much trauma and abuse and wounding was inside the womb that wasn't just held from this life, but ancestrally, um, ancestral genetic line and lineage. And I started calling in with working with the monad, the oversoul. And again, it was just next thing. What's the next step? Working through the molecules, the tissues, down past the blood and into the subatomic particles and releasing whatever wounds were in there, but not just for myself. And then I would do it for like the whole um, the city, the vibration, the region, the country. And it, it was just incredible. And I started to go on tour and now I'm on a national tour across Canada and it, it's unbelievable. The people that I meet and the wisdom, it, even sometimes I look now, I can't believe the information that comes through. And when people say to me too, that they're absolutely blown away by the reading, 
And I'm like, me too, because like, I've never met you. So I don't know where this is coming from. So it, it's, it's just really surrendering to it and being very almost, I was very disciplined. I was going to say strict, but extremely mm -hmm. disciplined with making sure that nothing messed with my energy vibration so that I could keep it as pure and as clean as possible. But you have to have fun too. And so I went to this other side of the realm where I got too strict spiritually. And, you know, now I'm finally in that space where I have that balance where when you're in the divine flow, they say it feels like you're having an orgasm all day long. So if you're not, well, then you know, you're not in the flow. So it's that easy. And bringing in that innocence of the child. So done so much incredible work have had and through Nat have met so many people and teachers and alignments and connections and ley lines. And finally, I got to go to Egypt. And now I'm actually running retreats to Egypt. And that was a real awakening as well. That was I felt like my whole life I was preparing to go there because I knew everything would activate in the temples, which of course it did. And the experiences I had there were beyond transcendental. I can't even explain or put into words what happened because it was so otherworldly. And the guides that I met that manifested themselves in front of me, just to this day, I'm absolutely astonished. I can't even put into words. My whole light body is just like tingling from the rem remembering of it but everything was literally it was guided it was looking back it's such an extraordinary journey that it it, it you, you just can't make this up and to connect with the incredible people that I have connected with and now of course social media is here we're able to connect like look at us here in England exactly. I'm in Canada like, unbelievable and their communities and to connect with our sisterhoods and brotherhoods and to elevate and, you know, to work. And as we're guiding each other back home and, and working through ourselves and embracing connecting with self love. I mean, it's, it's a lot of um, connection and spiritual ascension is not about leaving our bodies and going up to heaven. It's about bringing heaven here and embracing it within ourselves and preparing our bodies to descend the soul into the physical body and the guides to this day even too like it, it's incredible when you're working with the palladians the syrians the andromedans the lyrans the vegans all the gifts that they have and the music and the singing is finally i'm getting into being able to sing again i have a three and a half octave voice and it was, I had a record deal in the early 2000s, but I was like, this is not what I want to do. This is not about being a pop singer. I want to sing to, I was, I can only sing in Sanskrit. Yeah. And I was so fortunate that I was invited. My girlfriend got married in Egypt and she, her wedding actually took place in the pyramid of Giza and yeah, in, in the big pyramid. And we went up into the King's chamber and I sang in there for them and it was an unbelievable experience and just the resonance to be able to sing in the King's chamber changed me forever. And what was even cooler was everybody left and I was by myself for five whole minutes oh, and nice. I let it rip. And wow, it was incredible. It was such an amazing experience. And she married an Egyptologist. So we were able to, travel to uh, some really incredible temples and uh we flew to aswan and went to the temple of Philae at three in the morning and to be able to walk through on those grounds i, I mean just the memory of being there from past lives and, and just thinking about all the people that had come before me but how many lifetimes was i here because i knew things and could remember things that there's no way i should have known and ended up in corridors that had some pretty incredible experiences that you can't write about. And it, it's just, even the hieroglyphs showed me. I mean, it's just, I have no words. Yes, <laughs> it's just I, incredible. And, 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 you know, and that, and that, and that's, then that's how it is. It's like, yeah, sometimes the, um, the words are not needed because it's that feeling, that sensation, that energy magic um, that, that that comes off I mean the energy that's coming off you as you're talking is just so amazing it's just sort of like so <laughs> bright and 
it, it, <laughs> it's like you know you you can see all the light language and the energy just going um just, you know just just going just going through it which is absolutely um amazing you know that when you are on that path and you're allowing what can what you know what can come out of you and what can be revealed the synchronicities and you know what i found with spirituality is what it actually means is intimacy with everything every being every rock every flower every the weather patterns the the all the deities all the the netters the natural kingdom the animals i find i i I get so excited when I'm traveling out west on tour. We get to go into the Rockies, which is unbelievable. And the animals that come out, I get to commune with the mountain goats and the bighorn sheep and the grizzly bears. And it, it's it's mind blowing. Their energy is so incredible. And they just, they know, they just know that they're safe with you. And of course, I'm not going to go up and pet a grizzly. I'm not that crazy, but... <laughs> but that their energy is just I, I, the, the even like what you learn from the animal kingdom is it, it's just incredible and everything has a spirit everything has and when you honor it and you connect to the cycles and the rhythms of nature and the cosmic alignment it's amazing how everything unfolds in your life and the people that you meet the lessons that you learn I remember meeting, learning about Ho'oponopono as well, too, back in, I think it was 2007 or 8, and I've been doing it ever since. And that is such a powerful way to also absolutely shift. And the Chris, I mean, I have no words. Yeah. It's just, I, I <laughs> yeah. my greatest joy is to connect with people and to to read, to do meditations, to heal, to connect, to travel, to to take people to these incredible sacred sites around the world. And I mean, Egypt, I, I remember when I took people to Sedona, when that first the mountain reveals itself and everyone's like, oh, ah! you know, and they start crying because it's so beautiful. That's such an incredible moment. And it's going to be the same with Egypt. I mean, you're sitting in front of the pyramids and you're just like, wow, like everybody on the planet knows about this place. It's just one of those incredible experiences. And then to sleep for four days in the energy of the pyramids. Well, that's a whole other ball game. I can tell you stories about that, too. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, never, I've never had the um, privilege of doing that. I've been out to um, Egypt a couple of times um, now, but I've never sort of like had um the uh sort of like the solo experiences or um experience sleeping in 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 the energy even though i um i know i have had um past lives and actually i actually had a past life in egypt with my previous cat gypsy um mm. which which was which was absolutely um uh you know absolutely amazing so you know i e egypt i you know egypt i egypt i love i've never been to sedona that's Sedona and Mount Shasta are two places I would love to go. Oh, oh Mount Shasta I had the most amazing experience there too. <laughs> that place, yeah. I mean, it was so in alignment with Hawaii. It absolutely blew my mind. And, oh, I really hope you get to go there too. That place is so spectacular. But I, I haven't been to Glastonbury or um, to all the goddess uh, temples in england e so far either so that's on my list too on yeah list. oh <laughs> Glaston glastonbury is absolutely amazing I, I run retreats down um in glastonbury myself and i've been going down there for over 20 um plus wow. years and the energy down there is amazing and um i was actually one of the original goddesses of the white spring um way wow. way 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 back but the beauty with Glastonbury and I think like all um sacred sites you only get to experience and see what you are supposed to at That's that right. moment in time because you can go and visit the same spot several times but you will get a different experience depending on what you are supposed to understand and learn at that right. time and it will never be exactly the same as somebody else's experience 
it always, you know, there's a story about Napoleon that always gets me about him going into the pyramids where he thought because he was the ruler at the time that he was the only one that was allowed to go in there. And what's so incredible about it is that it shows you that you cannot manipulate the energy at these sacred sites. And that when he came in, he thought that he was going to, you know, rule the world and everything. But he ended up running out screaming in the middle of the night. So, right. <laughs> so it shows you that the sacred site itself will also only open up to you as far as you are, because you you are the key. You are the stargate. So if you're not working through your stuff, then they're going to help to elevate some of that shadow work so that you you can deal with it. You can get to um, a deeper resonance or a uh, um, a deeper connection or triggered so that you can actually dissolve those dormant and distorted aspects of yourself. But of course, at that time, I don't think Napoleon knew the word what narcissism meant. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that probably didn't even cross cross his cross his mind. Did that word even exist then? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> you know that that that's that's the question. Did did it ex did it exist? So. Have, they couldn't explain what it was. They just knew. <laughs> they they just knew. So have you always, because um, you say you first introduced tarot when you were 13. Did mm -hmm. you know from a from a small child um, that, that you had all these connections? Or was it when you got a little bit older that you, that you realised? So I, when people ask me how long I've been reading, I usually say 6,000 years. Um, that's kind of like my educated guess now, but, yeah. <laughs> but when I was younger, I didn't think it was anything special. I thought everybody could do it. So even too, because I could communicate with animals and I didn't understand why I was like, oh, well, everybody can do this. So it's, you know, not a big deal, but it wasn't until my teens that I started to realize something was different because I was always a very quiet child, especially in high school. And uh, it was almost like I couldn't, I was muttering or I couldn't say the words, but I could sing. So that was kind of helpful, but I still couldn't express myself very well. And, um, but the cards really helped me. And so it was just one of those things that, you know, it was the key that opened the door for me to be able to begin to express myself and to learn about myself. And I, as I got older, I threw the book away and just started to buy these different tarot cards. And again, at that time, they didn't have as much as now we have, my God, <laughs> I'm working on a deck too now, <laughs> just to add to the millions that are out there already. And so like you, you have your pick, but like some of these cards are gold mines because they really unlock. There are some incredibly magical, talented people out there. And like the channeling of the pictures people are drawing and the, the channeling of the words. I mean, my one of my favorite decks of all time has to be Elena uh, Fairchild, the Isis deck. That deck is just incredible. It has, um, oh, I've just got chills down my back talking about it. And how I actually took that one to Egypt with me too. And um, how the book, the booklet in that deck is so many incantations and just unbelievable activations that you can go into meditation with and call for yourself. I highly recommend you you pick that one up if you don't already have it. And I love to call the spiritual boot in the ass a deck, the Osho Zen Tarot. And that's another deck that I absolutely love that is really great when you're still in that point, when you're over intellectualizing, you know, when you're still super mental and you don't yeah. trust yourself, especially for our clairvoyant types who are I'm sorry, claircognizant types that are listening in right now. That means you know. You don't know how you know. You just know that you know, but you can't always explain that you know. So sometimes you make yourself crazy over intellectualizing everything because you're you don't trust yourself. And when you learn how to, I found that book was a or that deck was a really great start to help me to flip that switch where I stepped from over intellectualizing to surrendering and allowing. And you know, now it's a really big thing, too, where we're talking about the differences between the masculine and feminine energies. And in the principles in Egyptian, you have Ma'at. And she is here was helping with the divine sacred union or the heroes game, you could call it as well, too, where we embrace both our inner masculine and our inner feminine. 
and how, especially too, when successful women are in their masculine energy, well, how do you flip that switch and turn it into your feminine essence? How do you reconnect with yourself? So these are all also, they're also spiritual aspects. I mean, when you think about it, you can turn everything into a spiritual connection, into an intimacy of healing. I mean, even too, like this is going to be controversial what I'm saying, but even connecting with the devil, because the devil is still an aspect of God, but it's the most separated aspect. So when we reconnect with ourselves and the parts of ourselves that we don't like, the, again, the dormant, the distorted, and how do we reconnect to our divine self? Well, we have to be able to deal with the devil within as well. So heaven or hell, right? How you, yeah. you create what you are, where you are. And if you want to connect, even though they say to even with the angels, you got to go through hell to get to heaven sometimes. Again, you don't have to create that for yourself because we want it to be a little bit more easier. But, you know, some of the crowd listening here might really like to have, or they like some of the triggers or they like going through the scaling pain of whatever, because then they think they actually achieve something. But it doesn't have to be like that. And we've all been there, especially too. When you're dealing with like generational wounds and um, grief that is lingering in your tissues. I mean, we can go into the Akashic Records and call out those contracts, past, present, future. I like to do parallel lives as well, too, yeah. because we have in so many different directions, we can call in those frequencies and we can release them because you don't need them anymore. We're past a lot of that stuff. The other thing I found really fascinating, too, is astrology. Again, something else I'm obsessed with. And it's so interesting because the powers that be, the whatever you want to call it, yeah. the ruling class, the Illuminati, the whatever, yeah. they would always use it and then trash it so that nobody else would use it and say, oh, it's just a bunch of hooey, but it isn't. And when you unlock that part, the mysteries, the cosmic lessons, I mean, you need to connect to Chiron or Sharon. I don't know how to say the word properly. But oh, I always use Chiron. 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 Now that planet has got some stuff you want to learn. So that is right now it's an Aries. And that's another that's a generational planet. So you bring that combination in as well, too. And the things that you learn about yourself going through that, but also too, when you look at it for your parents, and when you start to do this, this work, when I was doing the um, the mystery school for Sophia Magdalene, we will go through each individual grail gate and we have eight grail gates. And I'm um, starting at the Yoni lips. It's the same for men as well, too, because they have the, the she, I call them for them, the Shiva Lingam and for women, the Yoni. And um, which is the Sanskrit for uh, vagina and penis. And for those who are not aware, but I would think most of you are now. <laughs> and, um, but through the grail gates, how you learn each individual wound, like the Yoni lips is where trust is. And where you work through your trust, through your pain. And then the second grail gate, which is actually your G-spot over lighted by Mary Magdalene, is um, where we have a lot of trauma. So, it, and that connects to your throat. Like, it, it's just incredible how when you follow the patterns, what blew my mind about doing the womb healing and the womb, womb work was how it aligned to the different grail gates. I'm sorry, how the different grail gates align to different vortexes across the planet. And if you want to read more about that, there's two phenomenal books I would suggest on that. One is by Anaya Sophia, which is, um, that one's called, I think it's called Womb Wisdom. And the other one is Womb Awakening from Serena and Ezra Bern 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 Bernstein. I apologize. I can't re fully remember their last names right now. But I mean, those two books too, like just incredible amounts of wisdom that are in them that will activate you and open you up and reconnect you to your your soul your your soul your destiny our physical self is our masculine side our our soul is our feminine oh it's frozen slightly there so we just wait for uh, you to come back another merging oh no you're a little bit frozen so they each have their lessons their wounds their nope it looks like we gifts so i just need to it was really 
So be a dark nights of the soul. <laughs> okay. Uh, we all have. Yep. And can you repeat that now? Because you kind of like froze on us with that, which is very. Oh, <laughs> trying to let everybody catch up <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, the um how many of us have had dark nights of the soul now it's interesting how those get a lot easier because you recognize it in immediately and you're like well i don't need to go into that whole drama of losing my mind but sometimes a good cry is good you know what else is really good going to a gun range and popping a few off or going to um play with bows and arrows or axe throwing. Can I just tell you, that's amazing. I did it this year and it was phenomenal. I went with um, our tour. So we went with all the a pack of psychics and our promoter and we went to go shoot guns. And it was the funniest thing ever. I mean, that should be a TV show right there. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing psychics with guns, automatic weapons. It was hilarious, but what a great experience. And you know, it's okay to be angry. This is where we kind of got to connect to our sacred anger. Don't give me this dark and false light, toxic positivity BS that, you know, oh, I am a soul, whatever, and I don't get angry. Bullshit. It's, we all have it. it. It's all, it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry. And we need to honor our sacred rage. We need to honor the words that we haven't been able to speak. I remember when I started seeing Anubis showing up and I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and that was a mind blowing experience because I was expecting someone else completely. And, and, but of course he's also the guardian of the underworld. Yeah. And he said to me, and I've heard this message many times now, but um, throughout and, and, you know, cause it's a collective message as well too. It wasn't just for me um, was that it's okay to speak now. It's okay to, um, you know, you went to your death with so many lifetimes of not speaking about the sacred wisdom, the sacred knowledge. You know, I used to get many dreams, nightmares, really, about the libraries of Alexandria going up in flames. And I thought all that wisdom, all that knowledge was lost. But what my guides told me was that that's not true, because all that information exists on the astral plane. You just need to tune into it. And I was like, wow, I'm not worried anymore. <laughs> but you know, to be able to get that message, it was a massive shift. And into like the crystals that I wear around my neck. Today I'm wearing um, this really beautiful piece that has a lot of morganite, rose quartz, um, and some other strawberry quartz and something I, which is unusual for me to not know what this is. But um, I've been working again through some major self-love wounds. We're in um, cancer right now. So all about the divine feminine. And so I've been doing a lot of work within the last few weeks again. And um, this time of the year, I always have even more rose quartz on than usual. But I went through lapis, clear quartz, azestulite, back to clear quartz, all on my throat because of all the shifts that were happening. But it's time to be able to speak. It's time to be able to communicate. It's time to, you are allowed to speak now. You don't have to be silent anymore. All the lifetimes where we died or were hung or whatever yeah. fun stuff happened to us, <laughs> it, it's not there anymore. And thank God for that. <laughs> but um, the singing has been really powerful for that, too, because I've noticed my voice went up another half octave. And especially since I came back from the King's Chamber, I sneaked a video. It's 29 seconds of me singing in the temple. Wow. And uh consent when you listen to it it is it activates you it's so powerful but um i was warned they took everyone's phone away i shouldn't even be saying this right now i don't think my show's popular in egypt with egypt, egypt oh come Hades on or... <laughs> <laughs> not around the yeah. world <laughs> yeah you're global, baby. <laughs> <laughs> ex 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 exactly. I am indeed. So as you know, I do uh, guide meditations and genomical card readings. And each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guide meditation or pull an angel oracle card for themselves and watching. But I happen to know that Charlotte also does various things and she's agreed to do a little something for us. So Charlotte, what are you going to do for us all? All right. 
So thank you again. <laughs> and uh, let's pull a card anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to do a card anyway, but um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to do so this. We're going to do a little quickie. No, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. It's, um, the best way, right? It's um, uh, so this is called the Cosmic and Earth Kundalini activation, and it's very good for whatever part what wherever you are on the ascension journey this is such a great activation um you can make it expansive as long as you want or you can shorten it and we'll do a, a little a, a minier one today but what it does is it prepares your body so that your soul can descend in egypt they call the soul the ka and the physical body the ba merkaba hello anybody no <laughs> but um what would this will do this activation is it's just it's going to help you if you have any um you know for those of you you want to you can put it into your daily practice it's really going to make a difference and um it just really helps to move the energy around and what i love about it is it synergistically aligns um the cosmic energies through your aura body hologram and just helps you to shift everything so it really clears you out good and prepares you for whatever you need but it's a fantastic ascension meditation um i originally found it the palladians uh, showed me this one about 20 years ago so i've been doing it ever since it's probably one of my staples and one of my favorites um but it has gone to crazy levels <laughs> since because it's opened so many doors but um We'll do the uh, the very first one they showed me because it's a really good one for you to have in your staple to um, when you're having any type of issues or, you know, even just if you're you're feeling like you're kind of at a spot where you don't know what to do. This is a really good meditation to do. So following my voice, take a deep clearing breath, inhale through the nose and exhale. And just bring your focus for all the ladies listening into your womb and for the gentleman to the root of your spine and visualize the tube of light, the width of your body going into the center of the earth. Connecting you to the crystalline core heart center of the earth mother. And just feel the energies as you send down this tube of light into the crystalline core activating the earth grid and you're going to start to feel this incredible radiant ruby red energy frequency flowing up from the center of the earth and feel it as it comes through the soles of your feet the base of your spine and it begins to cover and flow over every molecule and tissue all the organs into your cells and into the space between the spaces and begin to feel as it flows upwards over your organs liver kidneys stomach reproductive systems and flowing up towards your heart And just feel it as it begins to flow up and allow it on automatic to flow as you bring your focus now to your third eye. And visualize igniting it like a pilot light, a violet fire. And see it expanding into the four quadrants of your brain. And feel it covering your entire head, burning and transmuting all that is no longer serving. Feel it flowing down now over your aura, body, and hologram, your chakras. Clearing out, releasing any attachments, activations, any lingering attachments see them all dissolving when touched by this light and see it completely encircling your beautiful homoluminescent body 
and see the violet fire now turning into holy white flame of transmutation. And from your third eye, send another tube of light up to the grand central sun. And see the solar fires traveling back down the cosmic kundalini energies, bringing all the light language, frequencies, stellar activations that are needed according to your vibration and frequency. Feel the energies pouring back down in through your crown chakra, over your third eye, bathing and saturating your pituitary and your pineal gland. And feel it pouring down your throat, your atlas, elongating each individual vertebrae and flowing into your heart center where it meets with the earth kundalini frequencies. Now feel it mixing and merging. And see these beautiful cosmic earth kundalini energies awakening, connecting, and enlivening your heart. And feel it now traveling back up again to your throat chakra. Flowing back down your spinal column. Clearing, releasing any mucus, psychic debris in all directions of time, space, parallel universes. Flowing all the way down to your perineum. Activating your master cells. And for those of you who have activated your Merkaba, this will help to anchor it further, actualizing the frequencies. And see it flowing up over your womb, the hara, your stomach. Back up over your heart. And just see it flowing now continuously back up to your throat, down the spine, back down to your perineum. And you just feel a burst of energy as there's still more flowing upwards from the earth kundalini, from the center of the earth, as you pick up the energy. And you've also picked up the energy from the solar core. And feel it bursting up, flowing up until it reaches your throat again. But this time, Feel it flowing over your shoulders, down and out your arms, and out each individual fingertip, clearing your healing channels, activating and awakening further your healing capabilities. And bringing your focus back to your throat chakra. Feel the energy rising almost like a geyser through your skull. Flowing upwards. And shooting out your crown chakra. Where it washes over your aura body hologram. Now just take a deep clearing breath as you feel the energies pulsating through and around your aura body hologram. And we ask at this time to call forth your higher self. And you see a beautiful radiant self come down from the heavens above that looks exactly like you and stands before you. Placing your hands, palms facing up, in front of your higher self. 
let the palms of your higher self touch and connect with the palms of your physical self. And you should feel an electric electricity of energy. Look at yourself eye to eye, soul to soul, divine to divine. Accepting yourself in all your glory and all your transparency, transcendence, sparkling, stellar frequencies. Allowing yourself to accept this incredible gift of connection with your higher self. Feel your higher self step behind you. And from your crown chakra of the higher self, see a beautiful golden thread flow out and reach out to the crown chakra of your physical body structure. And in a symbol of infinity, see it flowing back to your third eye of your higher self, to the third eye of your physical self, flowing down to the throat of the higher self, to the throat chakra of your physical self all the way down till it reaches your root. And literally feel your higher self step into your physical body structure. And just take a few moments to experience the fullness of this connection. Feeling the radiance of your higher self. You may feel an expansion of spaciousness within your physical body as you align with heaven and earth. We call in your higher self, Christed embodied self, ascended master self, goddess essence. Help us to embrace and embody the divine essence as we surrender in service to the divine for the highest benefit, the highest purpose in all directions of time, space, parallel universes. And so it is. And bringing your focus back to your breath. Release the tube of light that was placed at your womb or at your root chakra. And send a new tube of light down into the center of the earth, connecting you to the crystalline core heart center of the earth mother. And begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Breathing consciousness back into your body. We ask to place you into a golden cocoon, protecting your energies for the next 24 hours. We're also just going to overlay you with a multidimensional healing integration chamber of light. And when you feel it is the right time, open your eyes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. That was that was absolutely gorgeous and lovely. And it was just it was amazing. Thank you. Look at your eyes. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I can hear outside a garbage dump truck is traveling driving by. So I guess it took our stuff. <laughs> exactly. It just all in all ways. It always, oh, I love um, how that happens. <laughs> you know, that was absolutely amazing and beautiful. Thank you so, so much. And anyone who's watching, you know, please do let us know when you're sort of like back in the here and now, you know, how was that for you? Um, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. So whilst that's happening, as I have my cards in my hat, we will do a card. Um, <laughs> so it's always when I do the cards, I do the cards for what we need to know for our highest good at this moment in time because even though I work with the past when we go to the past it's to learn and heal from so it doesn't affect us in the present and when I take people to the future it's so around they can understand and know where the future is the steps they need to take so they come back to the present and they don't worry about it because we always need to be fully present so what does Charlotte and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time what does Charlotte and everyone who's watching this need to know for their house? 
this moment. Okay. See. Beautiful. So we have got grace and gratitude. Through gratitude, joy expands. Wow. Isn't that a beautiful card? Um, and a good reminder uh, for all of us that, you know, when we have that gratitude for life, for everything we have in our life, that joy just expands within us. Um, so even, you know, the, the, the tiniest things, you know, just have that gratitude for that tiny grain of sand, that bit of salt, what, whatever it is, um, because it will build on each build on itself and actually flow and have that knock on effect on everything and every everyone one around. And for you, Charlotte, you know, it's actual confirmation for the grace and gratitude that you have for life, you know, your zest for life, how you enjoy it so much, how you embody it. That it's, you know, it just brings that 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 more joy to to yourself and to everyone around. So yeah, a beautiful card to actually come out to sort of like um balance and close yeah. everything everything down amazing <laughs> so so so, so that thank you oh no you're welcome that was beautiful so um charlotte do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers just for you to become the masterpiece you were destined to be when i say masterpiece i mean mass star piece because even to in, in Egypt, one of the temples, they have stars on the ceilings. And they say it's when the human becomes a star or when the star becomes a human. Basically, ascension and descension. Descension is coming back into your body and reconnecting so that you can become the living expression of heaven on earth. Absolutely so, beautiful. Thank you. thank you so, so much. So I hope mm. one you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. <laughs> so if people want to connect with you, Charlotte, how do they do that? I, the best way would be the website, uh, charlottesivak.com. And uh, thank you. And um, social media. I think I'm Galactic Diva on social media platforms. So, But if you put my name in, it'll come up. So, <laughs> Absolutely perfect. <laughs> And what I'll do is I'll I'll put a link um, to uh, to Thank your you. website and any so any social media um, uh, on on there. Um, and again, thank you so much, Charlotte, for sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed this as well. Beautiful platform. Thank you. Ah, uh, you are <laughs> you 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 are welcome. And of course, for anyone watching, if you're now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to connect with me and arrange a free 20 minute clarity video call where we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free gift of uh, connecting with your guides, angels, PDF or a future lifetime progression recording as well as a couple of other free gifts if you can sign up to my email list and again i'd like to thank everyone so much for watching and i'd like to invite you to share this video as i'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and could really do with hearing um charlotte's um conversation and words of wisdom and of course if you are watching this on youtube then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button and be notified when the show goes live or I post new guide meditations. And of course, every time you follow myself, Charlotte, any of my guests on any of our social media platforms, you comment, like, etc. It really helps with all the algorithms of getting our messages out there to help inspire and empower everyone else to take charge of their destiny, just like you. And you can be part of that web that you know that that helps our um people take charge of their destiny and i look forward to you all joining me same time same place next week take care bye mm -hmm.